Good morning. Welcome to Grace and St. Stephen's Episcopal Church online edition. It is good to see your profile pics. It's good to be with you this morning. Today is the second Sunday of the Easter season. We continue to celebrate life and resurrection in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are still away from our building 
as you know. But we continue to be the church. We pray together daily. We continue to worship together. We continue to serve those in need in our community. We have folks who are out there volunteering every day, who are caring for their neighbors, who are calling those who are alone. And we continue to love, to love each other, to love this world which God created. Uh, there are probably no offering plates in your homes, but there are still opportunities to make your offering to God through Grace and St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. You can do that through our website, gssepiscopal.org, and you will find that there is an option to give online. I hope you do consider supporting the good work in this community that we continue to do. There is also a bulletin available for the liturgy this morning. It was sent out to members in an email on Friday. If you do not get our Grace and St. Stephen's emails and would like to, you can sign up right at the bottom of the front page of our website, right on the home page. Sign up and you too will get the bulletin delivered to your inbox every week on Friday. As we prepare for worship, would like to begin with a prayer. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together, Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our psalm today is Psalm 16. I invite you to say with me Psalm 16 responsively by whole verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the, to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man tested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let the, your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Praise you for 
reading from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and rejoice with an indestructible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The Word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It was not hard to identify the moment in which life changed for the remaining 11. It was, of course, Friday. On Friday, just a few days earlier, a few short days before our gospel story takes place, they watched from a distance as Jesus was executed. That harsh, abrasive sound of hammered metal echoed through their minds still. The image of his dying body was burned into their memories. The sounds of his last gasps for air were the stuff of their nightmares. As Jesus died, so did their dreams. So did the triumphant future which they so surely expected. They had imagined his fame and popular appeal might translate into a royal throne. Everything they had seen, from the divine encounter on the Mount of Transfiguration to the feeding of the masses, the the way he could heal the sick, and his power to calm even the turbulent waters, suggested that they had hitched themselves to a rising star. They used to daydream about palaces and exalted titles. But then Good Friday happened. It was true that he sometimes rubbed important people the wrong way. Occasionally, Jesus said things that made even his closest allies cringe. But generally, it seemed that for every religious leader he offended, he gained a dozen new followers. And even though the religious leaders got worked up in his presence, also they seemed to almost enjoy engaging with him. It just escalated so quickly. One night they were eating dinner together, singing hymns, laughing at inside jokes, reminiscing. The next day it was all over. From that dinner to the garden to say some prayers, but prior to a concluding amen, Jesus was arrested, and before dinner the next day, on Friday, he was dead. Everything in their lives turned as dark as the sky above the cross, as as dark as the space inside the tomb. It was not hard to identify the moment in which life changed for the remaining 11. It was, of course, Friday. If it could happen to Jesus, to the man who walked on the Galilean Sea, they reckoned it could happen to anyone. It It could happen to them. And so they locked the door. Because the death penalty was no longer a far-fetched hypothetical, they watched it happen to their leader, to their friend. Probably they thought they were next. Jesus had spoken about his death while they were together, even about rising from the dead. But... One does not take such talk literally. Surely the disciples thought Jesus was spinning yet another spiritual riddle. 
because dead people do not come back from the dead three days later. Crucified men do not reemerge from their sealed tombs. And certainly they do not apparate into the dining rooms of locked homes to visit their friends. It was no wonder Thomas was skeptical. It was Easter evening when Jesus appeared to his disciples and Thomas was out. I used to think that meant Thomas was brave. He was the only one who was not afraid. And maybe that is the case. But this year, given the strange circumstances of our lives, I wonder if Thomas was maybe just more willing to accept their new reality to leave the past behind with its dreams of grandeur and live into this new Good Friday world. I imagine he was frustrated that his friends seemed unable to accept that life had changed. While he was out trying to pick up the pieces of his life, they were locked up, claiming to have visited with a dead man. It is not difficult to see why Thomas was skeptical. Perhaps his lack of belief was really just a mixture of irritation and sadness at what clearly seemed to be their denial of something that he had witnessed with his own eyes just a few days earlier. We might name Thomas Doubting Thomas, but if anything, Thomas is realistic. What he doubts is the testimony of his grief-stricken friends because their claim is very much impossible to believe. Until, that is, this realist meets the risen Christ the following Sunday. This time Thomas is with the other ten, perhaps because he's worried about them, and Jesus shows up. And once again, Thomas is able to accept that for the second time in ten days, the world, his world, has forever changed. He was able to accept the devastation of Good Friday, and the moment he encountered the risen Christ, he is able to accept immediately the Easter reality. Thomas is a man who lived very much in the present moment. He held the center in the midst of chaos. And in these uncertain days, his is a powerful example for us, for the church. Thomas came to understand rather quickly that the future is open and the past fleeting. When Jesus introduced to him the new Easter reality, Thomas left the Good Friday world behind and stepped boldly into unventured territory, into a new world previously unimagined. I believe the pandemic currently inflicting our globe has reminded us rather pointedly that the future is unpredictable and the past less reliable than we care to admit. That too is the message of Easter. The Easter journey is not from doubt to faith, but as David Lowe says, from one reality to a new one. Our Easter God is in the business of calling forth life from death, love from pain, good from ill. Our God is in the business of making new those things that have grown old. Our God has an Easter answer to every Good Friday. Could it be that our Easter God might be even now dreaming of a new future for us and for our world? Might it be possible that we emerge from our homes into a new reality, leaving behind those things that once left our souls empty in our world in the throes of death? Might God even now be dreaming for us a new dream? One day we will unlock our doors and venture out into a world of possibility. And though the details are still blurry, 
we know that life after this will never be the same. And while there is grief in that admission, there is also grace. While some things will pass away, we worship a God of resurrection who is always and forever making all things new. The future is open before us, waiting to be rebuilt, reborn, reimagined. And we are the ones called to dream those dreams, called to dream the dreams of God into that open space. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who the art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Let us pray to our merciful God, saying, Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your church the gift of your Holy Spirit. May that same Spirit comfort and strengthen us as we proclaim your resurrection to the world. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. God of wisdom, teach and counsel the leaders of the nations. May this world be filled with justice and with peace. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. God, our provider, you have given us this pleasant earth as a goodly heritage. May we use her resources wisely and always according to your purpose. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. O God, in your right hand are all pleasures forevermore. Bless your servants who are celebrating birthdays and bless also those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. All-knowing God, raise up for this city people who will stand and voice your truth. May we be led by you on all good paths in this life. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Merciful God, you are a strong refuge for those in trouble. Protect all those who suffer various trials, especially those who are sick and those who are grieving. Reveal yourself to those who struggle to believe in you. Make all your people glad by the living hope that is found in you. And here now we pray all our requests which we offer to you from our homes and from our hearts. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. God of life, may the dying and the dead rest in hope. Give us faith that you do not abandon anyone, even to the grave. And preserve us for the great inheritance you give us through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Assist us mercifully, O God, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of your servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by your gracious and ready help. Through Christ, your holy wisdom. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Christ our reason.